What can we do with an ATtiny85, a DF player mini, a MOSFET transistor, a buck converter, and an LED strip? Take a look here. So let's go. Hi, I'm Tom Kovicak, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. I just recently found some old clips that I did about a year ago that I never put together for a video of a project that I was working on for Thunder and Lightning. So I'm going to show it to you right here. I've been working on a project on thunder and lightning and i started out with the nano but then i went to the at tiny 85 this little gizmo right here because it has five io ports on it and that's just the amount that i need for my project i'm actually using four right now but the fifth one i could use as an ir sensor if I want to trigger it as a train goes by. I got it where I've tested it and I'm ready to put it on a circuit board. Mounted back there behind the mountain. Here's the AT Tiny 85. Now, since this strip is 12 volts and this amplifier is 12 volts, I have my little buck converter right here, which takes the 12 volts and brings it down to five because the AT Tiny 85 takes five volts and the DF Player Mini takes five volts. So where the 12 volts comes in is you get a signal from the AT Tiny 85 that goes to this MOSFET transistor right here through pin nine. Well, it was pin nine when I was doing it. I'm not sure what pin it is now, but this yellow wire right here goes to the MOSFET. That's the trigger pin. That triggers the LEDs at 12 volts. The DF player comes out to this amplifier, which is 12 volts. And I just picked this up. It's, uh, what, 10 watts? And these speakers are five watts. And these little Rubbermaid things I used to put uh, parts in some smaller ones, and when I first started with the with the my first project with the DF player, I had a small speaker, and I just stuck it inside one that was a little bit smaller than this, and it sounded pretty good. So I'm going to turn this thing on to see what happens. Now, when the amplifier is working and the sound is up, we got 0.5 amps on there, anywhere from point, point 0.1 to point. Sometimes it went up to 0.7. So, you know, there we go right there. But we'll see what it is when the uh, LED strip comes back on. I have a random pause in between. So when the, the, the LEDs flash, it goes up to 0.2. So we never really reach one amp on. Well, it, it it for a split second it might have went over. It might have reached one amp. It may be once these are attached permanently in there, you might get a little bit better sound out of it. I got the speaker pretty close to the microphone right there on that one there. I'm going to show you a few things that I worked on to get that to work on the AT Tiny 85 because what they tell you in the the white papers about it, they don't tell you everything and then you have to do some Google searches to find out everything else. Here is the pinout of the AT Tiny 85 and you can see the numbers on the actual chip are different from the ones you use to program. The ones I'm using are 0, 1, 
three and four right now, and I'll be using two for the sensor. So let me bring up the sketch and show you how they are. So the LED pin, the one that triggers the MOSFET is on pin zero. And let me move this over here. Uh, receive and transmit pins on here are three and four right there. The busy pin, this one goes to the busy pin on the DF player mini. This sends a signal back to let the sketch know when the DF player is actually playing a MP3 file. And that is on pin one. And if, if I put a sensor on there, it's going to be on pin two right there. Let me show you some of the issues that I ran into. Now this tells you that you can use serial communications on here. And that's as far as it goes. I had to Google around in some videos and nobody had a video on it. They, they showed the DF player on the, the videos that I found using an AT Tiny 85 and the DF player mini, all it showed was how to initiate a clip on there and go in a sequence or initiate it through a button, but it didn't show you how to do it through the sketch other than that. I needed to look up serial communication with the AT Tiny 85 to find what I was looking for. So here it is. It came up on instructables.com, ATtiny 8584 Analog Pin Serial Communications. It took me down to where it tells me which pins that I needed to use for the serial communication. And you can see the receive is on pin three and the transmit is on pin four. And if you try to use any other pins on there, it's not going to work. And if you have it backwards, it's not going to work either. I have the MOSFET transistor over here and then the socket for the chip. And then I have three pins here for the sensor. I have a two pin socket right here for the LEDs. I have the two resistors for the transmit and receive between the DF player mini and the chip. Here is the uh, standoff for the uh, DF player mini uh, instead of using a socket. And right there is the buck converter. And this is the wire that goes to the amplifier only thing that I had to do on this little amplifier right here is put two leads on the power. I'm going to use the barrel connector on there for the 12 volt power. This will be mounted underneath something like that where the two pins on the end will line up with these two bigger pins over here. And then I'll take these two wires from here and put it on the buck converter on the 12 volt side or, or on the high voltage side. So that'll bring in my voltage on there and my other voltage, the low voltage will be connected to the chip and the DF player mini. The buck converter that I'm using in this project is the same one that I showed you in a couple of videos. Here's one that I used with a rectifier and a capacitor so I could hook this up to any power source, even DCC track power to bring it down to on this one, I have it set at five volts, but you could set these at any voltage. You could see there's an adjustment screw on there that you could set the voltage on there. And don't forget, I'll have links to all the parts on here in the description. The DF player mini that I'm using in this project is available everywhere. The amplifier and speakers I purchased on Amazon for 
Oh, probably about 20 bucks. I think the, or maybe $21. The, the speakers were 13 something and the amplifier was six ninety nine. dollars Now, if you want, you could use any powered speakers that has a connector on it like this for the project. The only thing is on the, pro if you do that, you just have to cut this thing off here and hook the wires directly to the DF player mini. But uh, there's many amplifiers available or the powered uh, computer speakers, anything will work on there. The MOSFET transistor IRFZ44N that I have on here, I think I bought through DigiKeys, but you could get them at any electronic store and you could use them on multiple projects. If you're going to be driving your LED strips, multiple LEDs from one pin, you'll need a MOSFET transistor to do it. Now just be careful of the voltage. We're using 12 volts for the LED strip because it's a 12 volt LED strip. So you have to pay attention to what strip you get. You can get them at 20, you can get these at 12 volt, you can get them at five volts. So this MOSFET transistor will work on both of them. This is a one meter LED strip right here. I'm not gonna use the whole thing. I'll probably only use maybe 18 or 24 inches, depending on where they have the little tabs on there. You have a soldering pad on every third LED. So if you need to take these off and use them individually, you'll be using them in threes. If you plan on doing this, you're gonna have a lot left over. You could use this on anything. You could use this in your building lights. You can divide these up into three, mainly because on, on this particular one that I have right here, it has a resistor for every three LEDs. You're gonna need that resistor because as you can see right there, they have a resistor on there. You need that resistor on those LEDs and you need that soldering pad to wire your leads on there. So you could snip right between, right in the middle of the two soldering pads going this way. So you have a little bit on this side and a little bit on that side. All the other miscellaneous parts can be obtained through Amazon, like the uh, standoffs that I have on here. They come in multiple sizes. You could buy them uh, in quantity, in a packet, you know, in a uh, little handy dandy uh, plastic container. Uh, uh, these uh, chip holders, the same way uh, the JST connectors, the same way, Amazon, these little pins right here, you can buy them at Amazon. The resistors, you can get them at Amazon. Or if you got a an Arduino starter kit, you'll probably find them in there. They're 1K. And the barrel connectors, you could find them in Amazon also. So every, just about everything is available at Amazon, except for the little uh, buck converter and they may even have it, but it's a little bit more expensive. I think I paid 10, uh, less than $10 for 10 of these. And the perf board is also available. I got a whole box of them. I think I got about 30 assorted sizes. Uh, it's the, this one, the ones that I have is the Alagu brand. You can get any brand. They're basically all the same. And they're on Amazon. You can get them on eBay, AliExpress, anywhere you buy electronic parts. I hope you were inspired by this video so you could have thunder and lightning on your model railroad also. I'll have more videos like this in the future. So until the next time, we'll see you.